Hello, everybody. Welcome along to the Monkey Barrel Comedy Chat Show, where uh, every week we have a wonderful guest come in, a comedian uh, from the circuit that's visiting us to do their show here at the club, and we interview them. And this week, we have the wonderful guest, Eric Rushton. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we always wonder what the energy is going to be like. And oh, this is going to be a low energy. That. That's exactly. Soothing. Has anyone come in very high energy? Uh, yeah. I don't think so yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's been pretty chill. I yeah. do tend to go, whoa, and then I brought that down because everyone's just been like hey how's it going because it's quite early it's uh, quite early and well that's my vibe anyway yeah just being quite low energy but um i can try to change it up for you i've got range i don't i don't <laughs> <laughs> i have no range i don't need to lose yourself no. you come out of this podcast with a new personality yeah because then if it go, if there's like a viral clip and they all think i'm someone i'm not then it's not going to do well They'll come- yeah they all come along and they're all yeah. shouting for like, do the bit about the fireplace. Yeah. And you're like, it's not appropriate nah. now. That's that that's not done anymore. Uh, so, Eric, thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, what we like to do is, is is to get to know our guests. You've been doing comedy, uh, I think, 10 years now? Is it yeah, about 20, 10 years, 2014. Yeah, 2014. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe you won the Leicester Comedian of the Year in January 2020. Wow. So, you got research. Did, did, what did, how did we, you research? Our research team is very good. We've got I'm a lot. To go into. I'm not that present. That. <laughs> so that must have been amazing, but also super frustrating because that was just before the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, really killed my momentum. Like I thought that's... I thought everything was going to change and I was going to be a big star. <laughs> and then, uh, did you feel personally attacked by the pandemic? Yeah, I think I have that kind of Truman Show thing where I think I'm yeah. the only person that exists sometimes, and that everything bad happens is conspired to see how i react to it yeah like i i do feel that whenever things go well yeah my first instinct is like all right what's this gonna be yeah but it's usually just uh my bills go up or uh you know i stand in dog poo it's not a global pandemic yeah i mean i don't know and also i thought that was i thought for a long time it was just going to be over very soon yes so it wasn't an instant hit of like oh i'm doing quite well and then this thing happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when the f- f- pandemic first happened in whatever February or March, still felt like the fringe was going to be on that year for me. I, maybe I was deluded, but totally. I was like, I was like, all right, it's a month, month yeah. little break, and then um, at most, I'll, I'm three actually, months. I think I'm glad for it. You know, mm. on the, I think I would have. Um, I'm quite a slow progressor in yeah. comedy, <laughs> <laughs> so give which, you an excuse? which is good. No, but like, I think I might have. I was thinking of doing a an hour show that year. Mm-hmm. And then thinking about it, ah, oh, probably wasn't actually good enough to do. <laughs> so it's, pro- it's probably good that the fringe did happen for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah that's I, pretty good. I think my show was all right. The one that I did in twenty twenty two was that the first fringe after the pandemic. Yeah, I think there was like a mini one in twenty twenty one. Yeah, I didn't where it do was that. Just us local acts. And yeah, it was that sounded quite good actually. Yeah, oh, it was incredible. It was, it was, it was every, all sold out. Everything sold out. Yeah, like I would. I remember turning up to do my show, and there was maybe eighteen tickets sold, and then uh, I walked out and. There was a queue out of the venue and we sold out everything and had to turn yeah. 30 people away. And I was like, that's what comedy should be. Yeah. Just minimal effort, maximum results. That's what yeah. I want. Uh, Comedy's so hard, isn't it? It is. It is. It's such a weird, a weird, weird beast. It's harder than whatever anyone that's watching is doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way harder. It's harder than anything. If only people knew. I remember when those Chilean miners were trapped underground yeah. and people were going in to save them. They were like, oh, it's an incredibly difficult job. And I'm like, you ever opened a late show? At a well, comedy yeah, club? I think if I was being a Chilean miner for 10 years, I'd have got further in that career than this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be such a good Chilean miner. Do you think the Chilean miners were very annoyed? Like, oh, we got out and yeah. a couple of years later, the pandemic happened and it really harshed our growth. Uh, yeah. We were doing. I think we could have done really great. But they were glad for it because they were progressing too quickly in, <laughs> in, in mining. They needed to write some more. They got to take a step back and yeah. look. Uh, during during lockdown, the pandemic, like at what point do you think you realised, oh, this is going to be a lot longer? Let me think. I think it was probably when, about when the Fringe got cancelled because that was such mm. a big... Because I feel like that's a thing in my head that for that to get cancelled... Loads of people are losing money, aren't they? Like the city yeah. and everything. So that means it's pretty serious and it's probably going to be a long, long time. So. Yeah, I wish I'd done it. I, I think mine was it's like... It's quite a depressing episode well, so far. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine was December 31st of 2020, like when it went f- over into the new year. Oh, and I right. Knew it wasn't coming back. I just went, oh, maybe it's never going to come back. Up until oh, then. Oh, yeah, I did have the never coming back it. thing. Yeah. yeah. 
I think when I first realised it was at least going to be like a year or two, it yeah. was like probably a few months into it. But I did have that never, I had that kind of, because I, I haven't got, I do like maths tutoring as well and stuff like that. And yeah. that's how I was getting money. But I hadn't sort of, you know, I have friends that did like, have like proper jobs and that. Yeah. And then you had those existential things of like, I've wasted my life on a, yeah. on an art form that's not, that's not coming back. Yeah. And like, like my, my partner's a teacher and she was teaching like in our kitchen to kids over Zoom. Yeah. And she was then having to also go to uh, the, oh. these hub schools where they would have all the children of like doctors and nurses and you know, first line workers, front line workers, and she'd have to go in and teach them there. And then she'd be coming home and just absolutely distressed. And I'd be like, I didn't get to do my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I've got all my silly little bits I want to do. Yeah. But as I said, it's harder. What yeah, we do. it's harder. <laughs> That's what I meant. Again, I was like, I was like, can you stop could complaining, she, please? Could she do comedy? No, no. It's really? Couldn't it. handle it. No way. A classroom full of 50 to 100 screaming children yeah but like a a, a comedy show with a callback no yeah you gotta work hard to figure out how to do that although i do so ah, he's teaching harder actually i was a supply i did supply teaching yeah so that was harder because um seeing comedy i'm quite like low status and low energy mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i'll come on and just sort of like say i'm trying my best or whatever yeah but if you do that in, in a the, lesson in the they, they don't think you're playing with the form <laughs> I don't think, oh, he's subverting eyes. Okay, this is something a bit, bit different. No, they look and they go, yeah. oh, he's weak. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. Like I had a LucasAid bottle thrown at my head once. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember uh, when I was a kid, a kid in my class made like a doll of our teacher. And it was like quite, I, I thought it was a nice thing to do. Like the kid was like, oh, I'm, I've taken yeah, this class. This sounds class. psychopathic and then at the moment. <laughs> brought, brought it up to the teacher and the teacher looked at it and then threw it across across the oh, classroom the teacher. yeah the teacher just threw it across the classroom and says that doesn't look like me at all your detention and the kid was never recovered was never the same well, that sounds that. horrible it was horrendous uh but also very funny to make <laughs> a little a little voodoo doll i wish as he'd thrown that doll ac across the room his body then flew across the room voodoo style <laughs> that would have been perfect but they just did the Kid make it with good intentions. I think so. So that's I mean, why I, it's horrible from the yeah, teacher. I think yeah, I was. I think I was his age, but like I think the teacher was like, "Oh, this is some sort of insult." Isn't that's it? like when someone in the crowd's just talking a little bit, yeah, or just, and then you go really hard on them and call them like, can, you know, <laughs> oh, I don't know, like, Shut up, piece of shit. Bleep like, that out. I'm just that's not good I'm just for my friends. Reminding my friend to take his heart medicine. And yeah, you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, get him because you're so here. fragile about how you're doing or whatever. So yeah, yeah. So uh, you were very impressed. I can see by pictures our... of me. I can see research on your. <laughs> we, our research, we got a little bit more research, wow. which is uh, on your website. You have a meet my friends tab. Uh, oh no! Oh god! Yes, there was also an open occupancy for girlfriend. And uh, <laughs> our research. I made group the website in the pandemic. I was yeah. bored. I haven't updated it. A lot of this is redundant now. Oh, this this well, podcast. Well, I haven't got a good. I'm still looking to be fair. If good. Anyone's that's, to. that's all we wanted to know. You can put. Listen, you can. I use don't the know podcast. if I stand by everything. <laughs> we'll set a link uh, in, yeah. The, yeah. in the post yeah. for people to check it out. Uh, oh, cool. God. So <laughs> that now, now that you're deeply uncomfortable, uh, yeah. we like to do a little bit further. So it's a relax. good kick up the ass to update the website for the next <laughs> podcast I go on. Uh, one of the things we do in this podcast is mm. we do an Instagram deep dive. We go okay. into your old posts oh God, no. and we find one for you to look at and explain to us. So we're going to throw it on our screen right now. Right. There we go. Uh, so this is you <laughs> yeah, wearing a, a trainee badge, wearing yeah. the Greg's uh, yeah. uniform. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is what it says on the tin. I've, I've, um, I've signed for Greg's. I've, I've it's a, it was a free transfer from from the uh, job center. Um, um, was this pre pandemic? Big signing on thing. <laughs> uh, a lot of agent fees as well. It was pre pandemic. Yes, yeah. it was about twenty. Does it say the date? Twenty eighteen. I'm going to guess. Okay. Um, I was because uh, I, I I did maths at uni, but I didn't want to do anything with it. I just wanted to do comedy. Yeah. Um, so after I finished uni, I was sort of on the dole for a long time. I had one job, like I went and moved back with my mum. I had one job in a cafe 
uh, do you know? Do you have the thing called Flip out here? I don't know if it's national. It's basically like a trampoline place for kids. Oh, it's like I the think, whole yeah. thing is I think just it's trampoline bench zone here yeah. or something. And I worked at the cafe there, but I got <clears> fired <throat> after like a month. <laughs> I love I that think... you worked at you worked at bench zone in the cafe first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's not there's not trampolines in there. It's not you bouncing around. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that would be tough. Um, but I didn't really like working. But I was I was a big fan of Greg's just as a customer. Yeah. And I saw an opening and I thought I'll try that. It was like a couple of days a week. Um and yeah, it was it was a good time. I only I only worked there for about a month as well because I moved and then I worked in schools as a teaching assistant. But yeah, it was a, it was a good time. You get half price. Really? That's um, good. Although what was annoying about the staff discount, I don't know, it's very mundane. Didn't um you couldn't combine it with um deals. Oh really? So you know it's Come like on, a, it's like coffee and uh and a steak bake for two pound fifty or whatever. That's ridiculous. You'd be paying the individual price and then halving it, so it wasn't oh, actually that good. So it was never actually a good deal. No, but um, you know, I look back on it fondly, and um, you know, yeah, I mean, once a I... red, always a red, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. When I first moved over the here, the fans still was... sing my name. <laughs> they still have your sign on yeah. the wall. <laughs> your name. I never got past trainee. To be honest, <laughs> I never got my own name badge. I kept the outfit though. Um, they never asked for it back. And oh, I really? Wore, I wore it on stage once. Um, I don't know if you have that pic. Um, uh, I, so. I don't know if I put that on Instagram. But I wore it. I it was, would be amazing if we did have that pic. I was then. opening. <laughs> Just from your personal files. I don't know if this is. <laughs> I had a, such a bad gig in it. Mm. I just thought it was funny to come on stage. Yeah. But I don't think it was my crowd. I would I, love it that was at though. the Glee Club and I was um opening for Guz Khan. Mm-hmm. And um and I was I don't know, I th- there's just like like white kids walking on yeah. in a Greg's outfit. <laughs> And, and talking about how he's trying his best and that, they just did not vibe with it. At it was all. it was like a, a, a classroom situation again. Yeah, where they were like, like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> they don't um, understand it's playing with the format. Yeah, but, they're like, "Oh, we're we getting Greg's now. Is that yeah. what this is? Is there an interval where we get Greg's?" Yeah, but I look back fondly on that. Have you ever worked at a Greg's? No, no. Have you ever so been I was to only, a Greg's? I, I was only introduced to Greg's when I moved over here from Ireland, and they not have Greg's in Ireland. Not at all. No. So it was like a, a oh, revelation when fuck? I came over. But Why also it was, it was weird because I was like, oh, we closed at like four in the day for a while. It used to do that. It would like close early. I was like, is this like a religious thing or <laughs> Greg's? Uh, but it was, it was a revelation just I'm going in. I'm astonished it hasn't made its way to Ireland. I'm, I'm also blown away by that. Uh, I don't know what it is. is, that it the, Greg's the is like, trouble? No. Is that what the Tribbles is? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's something about Ireland and Tribbles and, <laughs> and they don't have a Greg's. So I'm putting two and two together here. <laughs> yeah. Father and son sausage roll <laughs> against steak bake. It's, it's, it was a terrible time in our history. Can't believe you've brought it up now. <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone that's um, offended. Um, yeah. Oh, what what do, you, do you have an equivalent? I mean, you have. No. Do you have a chain like? bakery that's i mean there's o'brien's but it's not as close like that's a proper mm. sandwich place where they'll cut you a sandwich and hand it to yeah. you like there's there's something about greg's about going in like there's a 24-hour greg's now in newcastle is it that's, that's the home of it yeah it is packed there's queues out the door all the time the only problem i have with greg's um to really get into the weeds is the lack of assurance that the food's going to be hot yes uh, um and it's you know i'm not the first person to point out that problem but it's real, a real gamble going in there. Yeah, when I go in there and they hear my accent, I think they have an assumption that I'm a tourist. So like the pe- person behind the counter will be like, just so you know, this is going to be quite cold. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've been to a Greg's before. Yeah. It's just like do you ever ask if it, is anything it, hot? That's what I say. Oh, do you say that? Yeah. I've never done that. I've never had the gall and they to let say me, uh, what's hot. They let you feel it through the bag. <laughs> no. I've got them to do that. <laughs> no, what? If you ask nicely, yeah, you to say, you know, because sometimes it's a vague question whether something's hot or like hard to define, and they'll say, "Oh, yeah. there's, you know, the some heat the, in it." The, yeah, the 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 steak bakes are sort of hot, and uh, I'll say, "Well, how hot's that?" And then and then they'll get it out in the bag, and you touch it through the bag. No matter what temperature that is, once I've touched it, I would have to buy it. Have nah, because you ever... you've touched it through the bag. No, but I would just feel, I would just feel like you've gone to so much effort. I have to get this. Have you ever handed it back and said, nah, no yeah, thanks? No really? Sure. No, thank you. That's incredible. <laughs> that that might be the most alpha move we've ever heard on this podcast. Well, I'd like to think I'm the most alpha male you've ever had on the podcast. <laughs> That's incredible. Who would, who would be the most alpha you've had on here? Uh, oh my goodness. Probably Josh Glantz. I mean, the, 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 the mustache, the, oh, the look. I don't know if I know him. I'm bad with... It's Josh. Uh, there's yeah. Josh. There's Josh. Oh, right I do there. know him, yes. Yeah, he's very funny. Um, I'm bad with names. I'm sorry. But go see Josh Glantz. 
What an alpha move, just like, don't even know who that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I um, immediately, like, um, beta worried I've offended someone. <laughs> uh, is, there any, is there any kind of thing you can tell us about, like, Greg's behind the scenes, like, when they make, or have you been sworn to an oath of secrecy? Um, do you know, each, each um, pastry has its own pattern. Oh, yeah. You know that? I didn't As in, know like, that the pattern all. on the top. Yes. Yeah. So the chicken, but I can't remember the, what the. Yeah. But some will have like swervy lines. Is the you can tell diagonal. what it is without, you know. Is that was it, that's the dumbest question ever? I was about to say, is that if people are blind and they want to figure out <laughs> Braille. Which Braille, is Braille. Yeah. Pastry Braille. Is no. it pastry braille? Pastry I think braille. it's more for the employees to know which shelf to that put. That makes the, more the, sense. The, uh, but it could be that. Just a, a person coming in, it's like, hi, I'm blind. Is it okay if I touch all of the food through through a plastic bag or a paper bag, of course? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have much behind the scenes. Um, always always put the coffee on before yeah. you take the food order. Well, before you get it. I hate it when I see someone not do that. Yeah. You know, if you're offering, you're ordering like a coffee and yeah. and a pastry. And, and then they get you pa- your pastry, pastry and then go to put the coffee on. <laughs> so that's, there, that's like a, th- you know, three minutes instead of two minutes. It is, it service is. Service. Is but, there like a deep feeling when you go into a Greg's now, like they better do it the way I was trained. There better yeah. not have been changes. Better do it the way I didn't finish my training period. <laughs> I never even made the first probation period or whatever. Well, you know. we, re- uh, in a previous episode, uh, we had a, a guest in who was a big fan of Pot Noodle. And we'll mm. put that clip online, Pot Noodle, uh, the Instagram. Well, don't say that because <laughs> oh, they're fans it? of us now. Oh, did well, they, they, viral? They, they liked it. They, they came in and they reposted it, which was very nice, the Pot oh, Noodle UK. Big fan. But uh, <laughs> that was just a joke. Very watery. We love Pot Noodle. Uh, <laughs> uh, watery enough, I say. Mm. Um, but maybe we'll get Greg's to, to come in and post this. Maybe we can get Greg's on board. I've sort of... I don't know if I've been enthusiastic enough. I don't think I'm an ambassador for anything. I don't think anyone yeah. looks at me and thinks that's, I want to do exactly what he's doing. This is our person for <laughs> yeah. Greg's, yeah. Yeah, but I'd love to. I'd, I'm a big, I sort of, you know how you're supposed to like little um, independent shops? Mm. Like mom and pop shops. Yeah, and like, you know, because they pay their taxes <clears throat> properly and all that. Yeah. But I just fucking love chains. <laughs> <laughs> I love Costa. I love, I love people yeah. slag me off for liking Costa. Costa, I know. Now, people I know. think Costa's shit, but I love Costa. I love the metal, uh, not the metal, the glass, latte glass. And yeah. I'm just there today. My, Brilliant my, place. My I'd partner, love to get a deal with Costa. Uh, my partner, she's obsessed. She loves Costa as well. Mm. Like That's her brand. Mm. That's her, her ride or die brand. Yeah. And if I go to any other, if we go to a Cafe Nero, if we mm. go anywhere else. Yeah, shite. She'll go there. She fucking hates it. No, she same. hates it. And I love Cafe Nero, but she despise i got here last night or like, like sort of e- early evening about four mm-hmm. and the costa there was a fire alarm going off they weren't letting <laughs> anyone in i was fucking gutted i thought you were gonna say they just let people in because i have been in a costa where an alarm has been going off and the mm. staff just walked around all the table and said we don't know what that is uh, yeah just keep drinking your coffee but she said it's not open like you know was trying to sort this out and then i was like okay i'll I guess I'll come back later. And then I stood outside for a bit. Yeah. And she came out and be like, it's, it's going to be a while. <laughs> I think she thought I was like a real freak. She was like, yeah. does, she, does he not know there's like 30 coffee shops like in the vicinity? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but they do. This is my place. Do they I'll, do my specific coffee? But yeah. What is what is your coffee of choice? Latte. Latte is good. Latte I'll, is good. Uh, I'll sneak in um, Tunnock's. I really love Tunnock's Caramel Wafers. Take my it, friend, and and I'll put them right in. at the till as well. Well, actually, yeah. Uh, Sneak into my bought from a from a supermarket, mate. I don't really get along with the law. We're getting we're getting some really good mm. insider tips for chain restaurants and places now. Yeah. Okay, so we've gone through our Insta. Uh, we now have social media questions that we've okay. gotten from the internet. So uh, this is per- well, we'll get to this first one very quickly. What is your go to meal deal? Um, this is actually sorry. I know this is quick fire, but. It depends because I've meal deals so often just being a comedian. Sometimes I'll try to be healthy with them, mm-hmm. but that's not what I would like prefer. Of course. But like, I'm, you know, I'm eating so much bad shit. I'll be like, okay, my meal deal, I'm going to have a pasta salad, like a prawn pasta salad mm-hmm. and um, <coughs> either a, a, a <coughs> flavored water to treat mm-hmm. myself. That's great. And this is the most disgusting part, but I'll sometimes have the boiled eggs that are all slivery and horrible. Oh. 
I've yeah. never, I've never had one of just those. Just to get the protein in. But if I'm, if I'm like, I can have whatever I want and I'm like, you know, can, can be gluttonous, I'd probably have, um, maybe, maybe a breakfast triple or something like that yeah. for the, for the sandwich or something with bacon. And I'd have tough one in the snack, whether sweet or savory, cause I could get, if we're talking Tesco, you can get the Snickers duo. Yes. Um, and Mars duo. So I'd probably have a Snickers duo. Um, well, I quite like a lion bar as well. Lion bar is good. Yeah. I haven't had a lion bar in years. And, um, you know, like a Coke or something Coke. like that. But well, I might have a sausage roll as a snack because you can get a sausage roll as a snack. Well, it's interesting you picked those three items because just down here, <laughs> we don't, we don't imagine if we had yeah. that picked out. Uh, okay, so the second question, a bit more uh, explain needed, I think, uh, which is what have you got against dolphins? Oh, wow. Oh, because I shared this. I was wondering, that was in my show. I just had a bit about uh, not thinking dolphins are as smart as everyone, they, as everyone yeah. says they are because they're, you know. They're not. They're not. Yeah, go they're see. Not. I mean, I don't want to just do the bit on the. No, of course, of course. Go watch not. my special. Go watch the special. That's what we like to do. Is a little plug. Eric Rushton, hidden, not that deep on YouTube. Slightly it's veiled under the form of a question. Yeah, is just it's a good special. A, There's a bit about to dolphins. Go see the show. Uh, I'll be honest. The person who asked that don't really have any hard feelings about it. <laughs> uh, I'm not really a principled comic that sort of talks about what they mean. Well, we have a famous dolphin, or we had a famous dolphin in Ireland called Fungi, and it was a dolphin that came into like a, a harbour in Dingle, which is on the other side of Ireland. And mm. uh, it just stayed there for like 40 years. It just came in and people would go out and do uh, boat trips. How long do dolphins live? Uh, usually about maybe 60 50 to 60 years. Wow. So it was there and people would go out every day and the dolphin would come up to the boats and it got used to seeing humans and being around humans and swimming with humans. And I must have seen it like on four different occasions. I swam with that dolphin throughout my life. And then when we went into the 2020 pandemic, mm. because boats weren't going out every day and no one was going out, the dolphins went, oh, I guess they hate me now and just disappeared, swam off out of the harbour mm. and it broke every Irish person's heart. That is sad. But also, I think maybe the dolphin was like, oh, I was really blowing up and then the pandemic happened, so I need, yeah. to, I need a break. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our third question is, what's the weirdest job you've ever had and did it give you any material for your comedy? Is it is it Greg's or is there, is, is there weirder Greg's, jobs than that? Uh, I don't know if it's a weirder job, but I'm doing a lot of stuff about working in the school at the moment, being a supply teacher, an yeah. exam invigilator and stuff like that. There's a lot of different stuff to do yeah. that you end up doing as a, as a supply I got, teacher. Um, which I'm writing a routine about. I got fired from a school because, well, I was an agency worker, so I wasn't actually like properly employed, yeah. but they they were supposed to have me till the end of the year. And I was um, I was trying to quit coffee um, and I, had, I was having a decaf coffee and then someone stole my decaf coffee from the staff room. Oh. And then I sent out a mass email to all staff saying there'd be serious consequences if I find out who's done that. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. I was like, I was, I was, you know, it was like my, one of my first jobs after uni and I thought, I thought you could do stuff like that in a professional context. <laughs> that is incredible that you tried to put all of the teachers in the school yeah, yeah. into detention. <laughs> yeah. I got a screenshot of the email. It just says all staff. Says oh. that. I was about to say the school then. I just realized it said the school, <laughs> all staff. The school. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I said I said an email about how I know you all think I'm just a clown, but I have a serious side. Brackets beast mode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, well, the worst part was that, that I got done like for that. They were like, Eric, "Why have you sent that?" Yeah. And then I sent another email apologising and saying, and I said like my legal team have follow, prepared this following statement, and then I, yeah. So you were sent a supply this imaginary teacher. M- message from a legal team, and then. Uh, couple of days later they were like yeah we don't need you at the school anymore Eric. oh man yeah well you were a supply teacher and you said well, yeah you i was actually that there. wasn't supply t- i was a teaching assistant which was kind of i was doing like small maths lessons with yeah, like kids with that the kids were struggling yeah um um yeah good in really um a few, got a few laughs though we really few people few people like loved that email eric like as i was yeah. walking around the school so it's worth it 
<laughs> I like we've really gone through the highs and lows. This yeah. is this is the most tumultuous podcast we've done yet. And I love it. Um, okay, so uh, uh, we've got some questions from our previous guest. Our previous guest was Dan Tiernan, and cool. Dan lovingly sent in some questions for you. Yeah, so let's hey, check Eric. Those out. Uh, oh wow! Full disclosure: it's uh, two a.m. right now, uh, <laughs> and my phone's got very low memory. So we're going to keep this very quick. Three questions for you. Question one. Why did you used to bring a tiger on stage with you? Good I was question. thinking about you. When we started, you used to bring a tiger on stage with you. I'm sure you spoke about this before, but yeah, I really wanted to know, like, where did the idea come? Because you used to bring it on and not mention it. Like, yeah, when did you first decide to do that? Uh, what happened to the tiger? I remember a Facebook post, I think years ago where you lost it and got a new one but then did you just decide to stop doing it at all yeah what happened there question number two uh what celebrity are you certain would love you they'd get on with you they'd like your vibe and the second part of that question is what celebrity do you think would not like you they'd go for a drink with you they'd leave hating you it's a good question the wrong way yeah and then finally like eric i think every time i met you you seem quite calm but I love these questions. Like, what this, gets yeah. you Start his own like, podcast. really angry? <laughs> like, what gets steam coming out your ears? Like, is it a certain type of person that you see? Like, the shallower the better for this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think he knows what brief means behavior. as well. Yeah, it just makes you want to fucking like. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, thanks. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Thank he, you to Dan no, Tiernan. Great stuff. If you're watching the show, please do go and follow Dan Tiernan. He's a great comic. Uh, wonderful comic, wonderful um, pal of the show. Um, so we've got three questions here. Yeah. Uh, why did you used to bring a tiger with you on yes, stage? Yes, I used to bring a stuffed tiger on stage. Basically, it was just my mum had one lying around. And I thought, I didn't. I don't think I, 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 th- I must have took, take, taken it out once and, and thought, got sort of gone to a gig not knowing what I was going to do with this. Yeah. And I just brought it on stage with me and then didn't do anything with it. <laughs> we sort of developed into a little bit of a oh, joke. I used to then wear a tracksuit and I'd wear a Premier League medal. Yeah. And then at the end, um, so people would be like, why have you got a tiger? And I'd just say, oh, it's my it's my mascot. Yeah. And I thought, oh, Premier League footballers have a, a mascot. And then and I'd say, oh, usually it's a little boy, but I thought that'd be inappropriate. So <laughs> yeah, you gone down the tiger route. <laughs> um <laughs> But I and that always got a laugh, and I just thought it was funny and random. But it was it became annoying because I'd walk, well, I get the trains to gigs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I just got annoyed. Maybe this is answers the fourth question of what makes you angry. It just really made me angry. People would be like, "Oh, I thought that was real then." <laughs> yeah. Oh, tiger. How, Whoa, how what? big was it? Was it? It's like quite a big stuff. Oh wow. Yeah. It was like a you know. That's a and that was the thing carrying it around. But that really annoyed me. Everyone. Like, I know Trying it's to, funny. Yeah. I've got a tiger, you know. Yeah, but they don't know I'm, you bring that I'm everywhere. A, I'm a budding semi-professional comedian at the time. <laughs> don't tell me what's funny, mate. Yeah. And they'd be, like, joking about my tiger and that. I couldn't be arsed with it. And you'd be looking at them like, do you think I haven't heard all the jokes yeah. about this tiger? Yeah, and, like, drunk now? people, like, especially on the way back from a gig oh, where yeah. there's the last train or whatever drunk people are and all looking at your tiger, wanting to touch it and that. And, yeah. You know. And that was the only point where the... The eye of the tiger would come out yeah. and the rage would come yeah. out. Sort of internally. I'd, yeah. I'd just be like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I've forgotten the other... Uh, so that's, that's question the, one that's and That's question four. one and three. So question number two, the middle question is, what celebrity oh, are you yeah. sure would love you? Mm, mm. That's a hard question. It is a hard question because I'm, I'm not got much self-confidence. Is there any, is there any <laughs> celebrities that you've met that have made you go, oh, no, or you just didn't have that connection with? <laughs> that, that, that are not people you haven't worked with yeah um i'm trying to think who i would love to meet just like um Dua Lipa or something that we'd get on <laughs> nice well you know who my favorite person is at the moment um I, I don't know if she do you know veronica is cool on instagram no she's so funny yeah I think she's quite big in America. Do you know her? Yeah. Yeah. She's so good. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if we get on, but there would be a dream to meet her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds weird now. There's uh, there's But a... she's, very, she's very funny. Check her out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mine isn't comedy. Does it like a guy called uh, Steve and he does this YouTube channel called Camping with Steve and he just camps <laughs> in weird places. Like someone will be like, 
sleep on a roundabout and then he'll just go and sleep on a roundabout and talk to the camera and be like, am I going to get caught in every episode? You're like, is he going to get caught? And uh, I I think I'd get on well with him. I think he'd be like, this guy's, this guy's yeah. chill. <clears throat> I think ones I wouldn't get on with. I don't know if I'd be antagonistic. Uh, Stephen Bartlett, um, mm-hmm. Tyree was CEO, Jake Humphrey. Yeah. High performance. I just, just sick of their faces, man. <laughs> But then people might be sick of my face if I come up on their feed, but... Yeah, it's every the Hugh adver- The Hugh lads on TikTok. Yeah, oh. Every, oh, yeah, every advert, like, before a YouTube video that's like, I swear this is the best Huel product I've tried. And, mm. uh, and just like, I need to keep clicking, um, ignore this. Skip now, yeah. move on. Report it, report it as yeah. a... Yeah, but I know he's just trying advert. his best and that, but well, I don't know. Uh, okay, it's that's pretty evil. good. I mean, for for a question like that, what gets you angry and what celebrity you sure would love or hate you? I, mm. I think we answered that well. Yeah, we yeah. didn't we didn't go too far. Please, um, just please get this to Veronica. Is cool. <laughs> really, <laughs> We're gonna if really want to meet her. If you learn anything from this show, it's that the people that we talk about will see it and maybe give it a cursory like. Oh, that would be a dream come true. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, we found out a lot about you today. We found out jobs, multiple jobs you've done. We found out what a chaotic energy you bring to those jobs. Yeah. Uh, we found out about people you hate, people you like. We found out about your meal deals. This is this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for yeah, coming Yeah, I've had in. a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming today. If you enjoyed this episode, remember episodes come out every single Wednesday. If you like the show, please share, uh, subscribe, leave reviews, everything that helps grow the show. And if you want to come down to Monkey Bro, comedy the shows every night of the week we'd love to see you at the venue so for this week for myself from eric russian from uh the wonderful you and behind the camera we'd like to say goodbye oh, and we do a big wave. oh i guess <laughs> i forgot social cues <laughs> there's something hiding under the ice imitation of a sound there's something standing behind the door would you like